Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything College Football Previews for week number 13. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is the Winning Cures Everything Preview Show. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and give you the rundown. You can find us and everything about us over at winningcureseverything.com. That is the website. It's got all of our videos, picks, previews, podcasts, our social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We are on YouTube right now. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. And leave some comments. Tell us what you think about this week. It's uh, it's not as bad as some of these weeks before rivalry, uh, rivalry weeks have been. We have a couple of good games. Yeah. And we've got some other interesting games that, you know, we'll talk about in the interesting matchups. Sure. We'll, we'll run through the rapid fire, of course. Uh, but there's interesting stuff. They've, they've worked to at least make the schedule better. I think. Somebody decided to put all of the damn games at 2.30. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about. But there are games to watch, and you might have your night open, so we'll... They're just all at the same time. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. There's a big game at 11 o'clock, of course. We'll get into that. Uh, the show, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them, along with everything else that's going on down there, over at tunicatravel.com. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and you leave a nice five-star written review we do appreciate the support from you guys. We uh, we try and read those on the show every now and then, and you guys have been wonderful this year. So we do appreciate all of the support for that. Let's go ahead and talk. Let's go ahead and get into the games. Okay. Game number one, Penn State at Ohio State. We're in Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio at 11 a.m. on Fox. They're going to have Urban Meyer in the house. They're going to have... Uh, Brady Quinn in the house, yep. Reggie Bush, Matt Lott, all of them. They all gonna be, and then of course you're gonna have the game day bunch there. We're gonna have like a uh, an anchorman kind of fight. Ooh, this would be awesome. That'd be kind of cool, right? I'd pay money to see that. I think. Uh, I bet Bear fights dirty. I bet he does. I bet Felica fights so dirty. There's no question. <laughs> There's there is zero question that Bear fights dirty. Who uh who would would Bear fight? Would he fight uh, Rob Stone? I guess is that the guy that does it. Probably. I think that's who he'd fight. It's, I don't know who would take on, like, Leinert and, and that bunch. You think Urban Meyer would fight dirty? No, Urban's a sissy. Urban's a bully. Urban's one of those guys that talks a lot of yak. He got hit in the mouth once, he'd go crying. Oh, oh, oh I'm having a heart murmur. I gotta, I gotta sit down. Sorry. I'd, lo- <laughs> Sorry. I'd love to see Lee Corso take him out. Oh, Corso would <laughs> bitch slap Urban Meyer. <laughs> No doubt. No doubt oh, in my man. mind that would uh, happen. <laughs> Herbie, so, I'd be worried about Herbie not wanting to get hit in the face, though. See, I Herbie, think Herbie he would hold fight. his own, but I don't know that he'd want to mess up the moneymaker. I think Herbie would want to take out Brady Quinn. I think Brady Quinn is wanting to be Kirk Herbstreet. Like, and and he's oh, a better... Are, it, it's are, almost like he's a better dressed, more dapper version of him. Like a younger, two, dapper... Those are two handsome like, dudes. That's I know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know that I want to watch that. Oh, come on. I mean, I'd have dinner with both those guys, but, you know. <laughs> I'm, I don't know that I want to watch them Oh, fight. that'd be fantastic. Two pretty boys hitting each other? That's tough. Yeah, what is better than that? Are uh, you serious? Two, two ugly guys hitting each other. They're not afraid of what they look like. I, th- I think Herb Street... I, th- I think he would throw down in this. You one. think? I think so. I don't think All he right. likes Brady. Uh, Brady Quinn. Oh, yeah, he's coming think, in on his turf. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, yeah, we'll see. Reggie Bush against Desmond Howard. That would be awesome. I mean, if you look at these shows, that they're like would be awesome. They're see, almost carbon Desmond, copies. Desmond could take his Heisman Trophy and beat Bush upside the head because Bush ain't got his no more. He doesn't have his. Anymore. He's, he's missing his weapon. <laughs> All the Fox <laughs> guys are just like. Like ten years younger, I know. All the I know that's that's the the scary part. I'd still take Corso over, over over, over Urban. Urban all day, yeah, every all day. day, every day. Every I think day. Corso could could be nasty. Oh, no, I think he, he could got, be filthy. No, oh, dude, that that dude grew up. <laughs> that dude grew up in a different era. There's no doubt he plays dirty. You uh, you're right about that. You're right about that. All right, the line is 18 in this game. Ohio State is favored by a uh, butt ton. So it's the biggest game it. of the weekend, and yet we got almost a 20 point line. Yeah, isn't that sad? 
This has happened a couple of times this year. Well, though. it's it, I mean, does anybody remember Ohio State Nebraska? There's three, I do because I made a, a lot large of large sum of money. Like the car note was paid. Twice. There are three teams this year that are really, really yeah. good, and then there's everybody else. There's four or five teams behind them that are good, and they could probably hang with them some. But you're there are three elite teams. We throw the word elite out a lot. Yeah, there there are three teams that are in a class by themselves. Yes, yes, it's um, uh, and it makes for not great games that are supposed to be big games. When yeah, I mean we we thought Wisconsin Ohio State we thought that line was crazy right. when it was That's like right. thirteen and a half fourteen. Uh, you're absolutely right. You're 100%. and and then it jumped to thirty eight to seven. Yes. Like it's and I, I I'm going to tell you like I'm going to make my pick like I think Ohio State absolutely like, wipes the floor with Penn State this week. I'm a little mad at Ohio State for not covering for me last week. I'll take Penn State. Okay. Now, you're I mean, taking Ohio State face. to win. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think Penn State's going <laughs> to There's no way, right? I will tell you, I was feeling chesty. Chesty. Now, I know it was people going, oh, back up. It's Rutgers, okay? It's Rutgers. In fact, they gave up 21 points to Rutgers, and Rutgers had a goal line stand to stop Ohio State. Yeah. I felt like... LSU won't punt if they play Ohio State. They're just going to beat the brakes off of them. Yeah. I don't know, man. Now, I'm sure that is wrong. It's <laughs> okay, and I know that I'm going to catch a lot of Ohio State hell for that. I'm fine with that. I'm okay with that. I can, I'm living I can in this world. It. Listen, we're the number one team in the country, and I'm going to be a little chesty right now. It's okay. It's totally fair. I get totally slapped fair. down. I get slapped down. I love let's uh, let's give you some numbers on this rushing offense for Ohio State. They're number three in the country. Penn State is the number five rushing defense in the country. Yes. Passing offense for Ohio State. They're number forty one. Penn State is number ninety one in passing defense. Yeah, I, I think this is gonna. This game is gonna be won and lost in the air. Yeah, and I, I think that's that. on both sides of the ball. By the way. Oh yeah. Well, it, if Penn State has a chance, it's going to be big plays through the air. But I don't, I don't at, know if they can do it. They, they look. Penn State, uh, Ohio State does not miss tackles. And they've got the least in the country. And well, here, just to give you an idea. Okay. Rushing offense for Penn State, number sixty-two in the country. Yeah, that's not middle great. of the road. It's okay. Ohio State number six rushing defense. Yeah, see, that's where that's why I I know uh, Penn State's not going to run on them. Passing offense, Penn State number forty seven. Okay. They cannot throw efficiently. They can hit big plays. That's the problem. But Penn State's not going to be able to out talent this team. Oh no. Ohio State number one passing defense in the country. That is a but problem. They haven't played any passing teams though. Who throws the ball in the Big Ten that yeah. they play? I'm not knocking them. Listen, I'm not saying they're not a great football. We just talked about they're I'll elite. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. They're elite. Indiana. They haven't played a team that can throw the ball like Clemson or LSU. Indiana. Well, no, not like those two. I'm talking about Penn State, though. I don't think Penn State can th- I, I well, don't I think know, they can throw effectively on them. No, that's fine. And that's I what agree. we're talking about but right Penn now. Penn State can't throw consistently on anybody. And that's that's the issue here, right? Um, Indiana is able to throw the football around. And they yeah. were not able to do it on Ohio State. They were able to do it on, on yeah, but Penn a, State's own. There's a disgusting talent matchup difference. Oh, yeah. In that game. There's a discrepancy big time. But, yeah, I I just I look at this game, and I understand the last few years, Penn State has been right there, and they want revenge because Ohio State came back on them two you years straight. You a lot of things. I don't see it. I cannot see Penn State even keeping this game close. I think Ohio State didn't give a crap last week. And that's that's the problem with betting on some of these gigantic lines yeah. is you got to figure out, okay, how do much they do, care? do they care? Do they want to cover it? This is why I've always said I usually stay away from them because it's the coach's decision on if yeah. he's going to cover or not. And I always hate that, but yeah. This week, right. I think they will want to cover. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I, I think point. they want that number one ranking. I think if you beat Penn State by 40 – you might could get there. I don't think there's any chance. But, uh, well, don't tell them that. You That's know? fine. Like, <laughs> they think they can get there. Okay. And I think this is the game where two, they... Two big wins on your resume won't get you there. When even the if they're rough 40. the other team's got five. Now you got a point. 
And those, those five teams are better than the two teams you beat. All of them? Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them, maybe. Okay. Uh, if Penn State does get beat by, like, four touchdowns here, I mean, how far would they drop? They should drop quite a bit. I mean, they would drop at least below Minnesota. Yes. And Minnesota was, what, 10? 10. No, I think they're going to drop. They'll be in that Notre Dame range. Minnesota, Notre Dame. I, I mean, Notre Dame. Notre Dame was 16. Nebraska. I don't know that. I mean, not Nebraska. Notre Dame, um, uh, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin range. I think they'll drop down to where the rest of the Big Ten guys are. What is that, 12, 13, somewhere around there? Yeah, it's 12, 13, 14. That's it. You think they fall below uh, Florida? Yes. I think, I think they right. should. Yeah, you may be right. You may be right. All right, let's move on to uh, to the next game, and we'll uh, we'll try and kind of roll through these. Texas A and M at Georgia. Interesting to have a uh, a kind of big time SEC game at this point in the season. Well, Georgia has to do it because they finished the game with the season with Georgia Tech. Well, yeah, they yeah, finished non con with their rival. But but to have the game. The week before the rivalry games, uh, and they're going to start moving towards this yeah. going forward because Alabama, Auburn, Texas A and M are all going to be playing each other in November because Georgia Auburn is moving to October. It so, just it just means late September, early October is going to be garbage. Yeah, they're moving all the big games. They're moving all of them to the back. That means that means the early part of the season is going to be terrible. Yeah, not just not good. It's going to be awful. And I think it kind of hurts the SEC because it sets them up where well, they're going to cannibalize one another. Yeah, I mean you're going to have to play. It's it's also bad for you know, sport that every week you don't have much, and then you're going to have four weeks where you're going to have everything backloaded. Yeah, I don't like the backloading. But either way, we do have Texas A&M Georgia this week. It is a thirteen and a half point line. It's two thirty p.m. on CBS, along with every other damn game this weekend uh, at Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. A and M. Look, I saw this line. It opened at 15 and a half, and I just, I immediately hit it at 15. Yep. Uh, as soon as it went up on, on my book, like, I said, there is, there's just no way. Yeah. Now, I'm a little scared of it now because so many people are on Texas A&M. It's a big number. I mean, it's a big number. They're playing really good football right now. Georgia's playing just good enough to win. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. They've already clinched the East. They don't have a whole lot to play for. Don't lose. Beat LSU, and and you're in the playoffs. So just just stay healthy. I don't think they're running it up on anybody. And no. some of that is I don't think they have the ability to. If you uh, if you look at the against the spread average for both of these teams, they are both dead on the number, dead on zero. Like, it's crazy that neither of them is a plus or a minus against the spread this year. Yep. Now, obviously, single games, yes, some are going to be over, some are going to be under, whatever. But the against the spread average, they are both exactly where everybody thought they would be, which is nuts to think about. Yep. Um, A&M, you know, number 18 at the power rating, uh, Georgia number 5 at the power rating on this particular site here. Uh, as far as the actual numbers go, Rushing offense, Georgia's number 27. A&M is number 31 in rushing defense. Georgia number 84 passing offense. A&M number 34 passing defense. So there is a slight advantage there for A&M. They, I think, will be able to slow down Georgia a little bit. I do too. I mean, I do too. Now, where the real advantage is, is on the other side of the ball. Yes. A&M, the number 46 rushing offense in the country. Georgia, number three, rushing defense. Correct. A&M, number 50, passing offense. Georgia, number 15, passing defense. So, the biggest advantage in the entire game has to do with Georgia's defense over A&M's offense. So, you know how I always argue that all these numbers are screwy, and they're screwy based on who the teams have played? Yeah. Name a great offense Georgia's played the entire year. Because Florida's a really good football team. Florida sucks on offense. Auburn's would you, a really would good you consider team. Notre Dame a good offense? They're the best offense they've played. Other than that. But Auburn is a really good football team, but they're not good on offense. It's oh, easy yeah. to make those defensive numbers look good when the best offense you've played is Notre Dame and the second best is probably Florida. Tennessee? Nah, Florida. Florida's a better a better offense than Tennessee. 
Okay. But even still. Well, Florida's not a good offense. No. No, you're right. I mean, I I would say Missouri, but they caught Missouri no. at the. That ain't Missouri. Like, it was Missouri in the first five games of the year, and in the, in the last five they've, you know, been yeah. blanked, scored six points against Florida, scored seven points against uh, yeah. That's whoever. Not, yeah, that's not just Georgia holding them to nothing. The last three people have held them to nothing. Yeah. I mean, that they haven't played a good offense all year. You have a very valid point. So that's why I'm not saying that means Georgia's garbage here, okay? I'm just – I'm trying to define – it. did the same thing with Ohio State. Ohio State's an exceptional football team. But maybe the reason their passing numbers for defense look so great is because they don't play teams that throw the football. Now they, they, defense, do, they do play teams that run the football, and they just gave up their first rushing touchdown of the year. To Rutgers. To – well, not to Auburn. Oh, you're talking about Georgia. Yeah, I'm talking about Georgia. Um, yeah, we're we're on Georgia and A and M now. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, it's the same thing. Like it's just, it's just one of those things that, they're maybe their defensive numbers they're still really good on defense, but are they great on defense? If they had to play A and M and Alabama and LSU and even like teams like Ole Miss that can move the football, would they be great? It's a good question. Now, they could probably still have the record they have. They could probably still win a lot of football games, but would their defensive numbers be this strong? That's a that's a very valid point, very valid point. Uh, what uh, what's your pick here? I would take A and M. I'm gonna take A and M to cover. I think Georgia wins the game. You doing the same thing? Um, let me look at your sheet one time. Thirteen and a half. Nope, that's not what I'm looking at. I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> Give me one upset. One of, so I'll, this one? I'll take a and I'll be damned, all right. A&M money line. You know, for years during this playoff, the four team was the curse spot. And this year, it was when Penn State had it and then Georgia got it. I thought they were going to put Alabama in it over Georgia, and then they would have had the curse spot. So I, I just I wonder, is there any kind of weird voodoo going on? It might be. It it really might. They be. survived it one week. Can they survive it too? I mean, that's a, this is a tough back to back. I, I, I get it. This is a tough back to back. Get it. You're right. You're right. All right. Next game up, we are going to Waco, Texas. The Longhorns go to the Bears. The Bears are a five and a half point favorite. Two thirty p.m. game on FS1 because of course it's at two thirty. It's at McLean Stadium in Waco, Texas. Uh, Baylor coming off of a heartbreaking loss to Oklahoma in which they led 28-3 and then lose 34-31. Jalen Hurts looks like a miracle worker, of course. Texas loses a heartbreaker after scoring to take the lead with, what, a minute something left? Yeah, like a minute 13, a minute 31. It was something of that nature. And then they have Iowa State drive and kick a field goal to beat them 23-21. Texas now has four losses on the season. Uh, Baylor just took their first loss last uh, week. Everybody loves Baylor this week, it feels like. I just don't understand where you get that from because I think the majority of people like Texas. I don't maybe, – maybe I'm crazy here. I don't know who you listen to that say everybody likes Texas. Baylor. Everybody no, – it's just the people that I have listened to so far – all nobody's Baylor, liked Baylor all year, even they, when they were winning. Well, no, they all talk about Baylor being the better football team. They are the better football team. They're not being the better football team. They are the better football team. Every way you measure a football team, they're better. I agree with you. I agree. They are a better football team. But, but everybody's not picking them. I would bet nobody's picking them. Let's see. Not that that matters or affects the game in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're right. You're right. Uh, the biggest advantage for both teams is throwing the football for both teams. Okay. Texas, number 12 passing offense in the country against the number 62 passing defense for Baylor. Baylor, number 35 passing offense against the number 127th mm, passing, of off, or passing defense in the country. That's a lot. Yeah, there's 130. Wow. So you're talking... 
UMass, Rutgers, and Akron are worse than them? Yeah, probably. That's that's the list. Good job, Texas. Texas back, baby. I bet UMass probably hopped in front of them this week since uh, Northwestern only threw for seventy six yards. <laughs> Northwestern, yeah, the UMass got a better better passing defense than them. Also. Probably, probably. Um, I like Texas in this spot. With the, I think they're going to win outright. I'll go on and do that. I think I think this is a spot where Texas gets a win. You know, nobody really necessarily expects it. I don't think. I think everybody's expecting it, but that's well. I'll, then the, I will be with everybody. They got beat last week, and the headline that came across my phone immediately was, "Iowa upsets Texas." Or Iowa State upsets. Texas. Iowa State upsets Texas, which is hilarious because, because they it was were a seven upset. point favorite, and it was like a plus two eighty money line. If you took Texas, I'm going to take Baylor. I think Baylor's not going to lose two back to back teams, back games. I think Baylor is a better football team than Texas, and Texas not near as good as Oklahoma, and it took Oklahoma all they wanted and all they had. Texas defense, they're not getting five stops in the second half. They're just not. Yeah, you may be right. I mean, it took a miraculous effort by uh, Oklahoma's defense to get three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out the entire second half. Oh, yeah. I mean, they they ran 16 plays in the second half. Texas is not capable of doing that. What Oklahoma ran what ninety plays to only fifty four for Baylor? Yes. I mean, it was just ludicrous. Yes. Uh, Texas will not be doing that this week. No, I guarantee you that. And Ellinger is really good. I like Sam a lot. He ain't Jalen. No, he's definitely not. He's definitely not. And he didn't have the weapons Jalen has. I just don't. I think, think they got some weapons. They, but they're not, think they're not as good as they're not as good as Oklahoma, and they're not as good as Baylor. They're just not a good as as good of a team. I think, yeah, I mean, I guess that's fair. That's fair. And Matt Rule will outcoach the pants of Tom, Tom, Tom Herman. I mean, I disagree with that. I, I, I think Texas could win the game and Baylor still be a better coach team, but I don't know. I think Texas got a lot more talent. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. If, so. you, if you look at the stars next to their names when they were in high school, no, there's no question Texas is supposed to be better. They're not. You look at the ten games that they played this year. Oh, it's not. It's not close. They're not. Not close. You're right. Let's uh, let's move on to the next one. Pitt at Virginia. Uh, sorry, Pitt at Virginia Tech. Excuse I was about to me. Say, wait a minute. It's another two thirty game. Two thirty ESPN two. That's fine. Pitt football is hard to watch. Yeah, is that Lane I don't Stadium? Mean to disperse them. I, I, you know, I'm not just passing them off, but. Now, I will say this. Pitt the, football is tough the to watch. The ACC Coastal is still a mess, but there's only three that are that are up there for it right yes. now. we got three live dogs. Virginia Tech, yes. Pitt, and Virginia. Now, Virginia Tech plays Pitt at home this week in Lane Stadium in Blacksburg. They've got a game at Virginia next week. So, if Virginia Tech wins these two, smooth sailing. They get Clemson. They get Clemson. And they probably get the ACC's berth in the Orange Bowl. Probably. Now, the issue there, of course, is I don't. I still don't know that they would be ranked. And the ACC has a contract with the Orange Bowl. Can you imagine the the executives at the Orange Bowl? This is why conference affiliation with bowls has is, to go away. This is why dumb. we need a czar. Yeah. We we need a college football commissioner. We need a ruler of all things. Or they needed to put in something in that Orange Bowl contract to say, if you are not ranked... Then we're going to take somebody else. We can take somebody else. Because this is too big of a bowl game to have an unranked ACC team in there. But... Correct. Either way, this ball game uh, is going to be ugly, I would assume. Um... Let's let's look at some of these numbers. Pitt, number nine rushing defense in the country. Virginia Tech, number forty nine rushing offense. Yeah, now they have gotten the they've, gotten they've gotten significantly better. better over the past few weeks, past four or five weeks. Yes, since that Duke game, really. Yeah, the Notre Dame game. Passing offense, Virginia Tech, number seventy four. Pitt, number forty seven passing defense. I mean, all of the advantage right now, looking like Pitt, right? If you look at Pitt's offense. 
Rushing offense, they are number 106 in the country. Is that good? That is not very good. The rushing defense for um, for Virginia Tech is number 28. So that's a massive advantage for Virginia Tech. However, Pitt's passing offense, number 38 in the country. Does that kind of surprise you a little bit? Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked by that. I mean, they had 2,000-yard rushers uh, last year. Maybe, Lost both of them. maybe they, they're not as boring as I think they are. Um, Mark Whipple. Of course, running is, the football is not boring to me. I just no, don't. it's uh, Mark Whipple is their offensive coordinator. He was the yeah. head coach at UMass last year. Okay. He com- came in, turned Kenny Pickett around, got him throwing the ball. Now, I will say this: their receivers drop passes, maybe more than any team that I have seen all season. So they're not good. They're not. They're not great. Now they were able. They're able to catch enough. I mean, they beat North Carolina last week in overtime. I mean they're they're sitting at five and two in the in the conference right now, so they're not terrible, but but they're five and two in the worst conference in football, in the worst division I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna stand by my previous statement. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so number one hundred six to the number twenty eight rushing defense for Virginia Tech, but number thirty eight passing offense for Pitt against the number 98 passing defense for Virginia Tech. So Pitt has an advantage both on defense and offense. This Virginia Tech team is totally different than the team that started the season. I I think I agree with you. So so many of these numbers, if you could tell me that we can cut stats off and just look at what they've done the last three or four games, I would feel a lot better about that because this is a different team. Yeah, I think it is. I like Vitek to win the game. I, uh, I think Virginia Tech wins and covers. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, I think they're playing out of their minds right now. Uh, this team has completely flipped, and the the demise of Justin Fuente was greatly exaggerated, greatly as we said. I, and I greatly exaggerated it. Yeah, we, we talked about it, and it, it did not look good early. No, I will say that. But he flipped that thing around, and that, I mean, it's been impressive what they've done. So, props to you, Mr. Fuente. We, uh, we apologize. Let's move on. Next one. Last one of the top five here. SMU at Navy. Navy is a three and a half point favorite at home. 2.30 p.m. game because why not? Let's put them all at 2.30. This is on CBS Sports Network. It should be on a better station, but whatever. I agree. Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland. Um, This, if Memphis were to lose, the winner of this game would be, if they went out, of course, the winner of this game would be in the AAC championship game. That's why it is a big game. For those of you that might be questioning why we would pick this one as opposed to something else. If you're questioning why we picked it, then you watch. You need to watch the American more often. Yes. Navy did get blasted last week by Notre Dame. There's a lot of teams that have been blasted that's, by Notre that's Dame. That's a far superior opponent. Yeah, that just happens. But that doesn't mean that Navy is not a good football team. No, sir. It means that crap happens sometimes. Yes, sir. So... Uh, Navy, of course, number one rushing offense in the country, number 128 passing offense. Uh, SMU, surprisingly, number 26 rushing defense. Now, I don't know that that is going to help them against the triple option. No, yeah, you could take some of these numbers and throw them away. Yeah. Um, passing defense, SMU is number 125. They can't stop the pass, but if Navy doesn't ever pass, there's no advantage there. So, rushing offense for SMU, number 31, Rushing defense for Navy is number 20. Number seven passing offense for SMU, which makes sense. Sonny Dykes, air raid, and he's got himself Shane Bichelle back there. They got some weapons. Uh, Number 52 passing defense for Navy. This is a fascinating matchup. Yeah, these are two completely differently, like, coached and ran football teams. Yes, you've got... But SMU, they're both well coached. SMU great that program. loves to score quickly, that wants to throw the ball, wants to get out, and and they ain't great on time of possession. Then you got Navy, who is great on time of possession. Navy may hold the football for forty five minutes. Yes, and and still may lose. And still may lose. Uh, it's it is fascinating. I cannot wait to watch this game. No, this is going to be a good game. I, I'll have it, it on it one deser- of the TVs. It deserves to be in one of our big games that we're talking about, and uh, it's going to be a an interesting game if nothing else. I think SMU can win this game. I do too. I like SMU. I was shocked that they were an underdog. I I agree. I, I was, agree. I was surprised that they were the underdog. So we're both taking SMU to win straight up, huh? Yes, sir. I like it. Now, 
Let's get into the rapid fire uh, interesting matchup rundown. And let's uh let's hit them all just real fast. Okay. Michigan minus eight and a half at Indiana. Michigan is playing maybe as one of the top seven teams in the country right now. Absolutely. They have I, completely I flipped team. the switch. They are a different team than what they were before the season started. And uh Indiana's good. Indiana they ain't as good as boss, Yeah. They're they're not as good as Michigan right now. Uh they are very good. They've had a really good season. Yes. But they should be proud of that season. Yes. And they'll they go should. bowling. Yes, they will. They'll have a good bowl. Yeah. Good bowl. Uh, TCU at Oklahoma. Oklahoma, an 18-point favorite. We like Gary Patterson. We do. And Oklahoma has been playing a lot of games really close. It is almost time for another one of them to bite them. Yeah. I don't know that TCU can get it done. I don't know that TCU has the horses to do it, but I, I know they got the coach to do it. Yes, they do. Oregon at Arizona State, plus 14.5 for the Sun Devils. Uh, they've lost four straight. They do have Jaden Daniels back now, but, man, this is a, a tall task here. Oregon does have the rivalry game next week against Oregon State, but, I I mean, it is Pac-12 after dark. I just, these two teams, Oregon Pac-12 and Utah. Pac-12 after dark one. ended about three weeks ago. At least for these two teams, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, lately it's kind of all been chalk. Yeah. Late. Yeah, you might be right. So in any any way Arizona State pulls this off? I don't think so. I think I think the fighting Herms are are struggling right now. Temple at Cincinnati. What is that line? Minus ten? Ten, I think it 10. is. Ten. All right. Cincy minus ten. That seems like a lot of points here. Cincy has had some trouble. Um they haven't really had trouble at home. Ten and a half as well. Ten and a half right now. now. So ten. so Cincinnati has not had problems necessarily at home. Temple does have problems on the road. That's that's the biggest thing. Temple's got problems on the road. Cincinnati plays really well at home. Um, not that this matters all the time, but it just happens to stand out while I'm looking at it. Majority of the picks are on since uh, Temple, but the line is moving the other way. The majority, what is it, 75%? 76% are on Temple, but the line is going up instead of down. That's interesting. They want more people on Temple. They're willing to let you take that money. Hmm. That is interesting. Um, I will say this. Temple has won four in a row over Cincy. So. Cincinnati looks like an incredible football team, though. Yeah, they, they really do. They Now, they they haven't on the road the last couple of weeks? No. Well, they're winning those games. But they are winning those games. And they're though. the best team in this conference right now, and they're getting everybody's uh, best no, shot. No, 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 no. Let's, let's not necessarily go that far. I think Memphis is probably better than they are. Well, if you looked at our records – they both have one loss. Memphis's is to a conference team. Theirs is to Ohio State. Agreed. At Ohio State. The big horseshoe looking thing. Well, I mean, we'll we'll see this weekend, right? Because Memphis lost at Temple. Now Temple goes to Cincy. So we'll figure it out. I do I, well, we'll also figure it out next weekend. Because Cincy goes think, to Memphis. I think that's more indicative of when that's we'll figure it out. Probably right. Look, I love Memphis. I want Memphis to win it, but I'm judging based on resume. I gotta be fair. I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, four more, Tennessee at Missouri. Missouri has played like garbage, and yet they are favored. Uh, they have scored 13 total points in the last three weeks. I don't That's not get, good? I don't understand 13 it. 13 in the game? Uh, oh, yo, in, spread out over three weeks. I got over it. three weeks. Yeah, yeah they scored bad. six last week, zero the week before, and seven the week before that. This team also put up 14 points on Vanderbilt, who gets drubbed by everybody. So, uh, pay attention to that one. I think outright doggy win there probably happens. Louisiana Tech at UAB. Louisiana Tech was rolling, folks, all year long. And their quarterback and their wide receiver were like their star wide receiver, their star quarterback, because they were putting up massive numbers. It's five and a half, I believe, right? It, is, it opened at one. Yeah, until it's, everybody realized that their quarterback and wide receiver were going to be suspended. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then now that's why it made it jump. Yes. I was about to say, there's no possible way it jumped that much. Because place. Louisiana so Tech moment. was eight and one. On the season. And then they go to Marshall and get hammered with their backups last week. Yep. And then they realize they're going to be suspended again this week. Now, I don't know what they did. It, it was some violation of athletic department policy. Sure. Whatever that means. We got it. But, yeah, if, if, you, if you are a UAB fan, you might want to pound this number. Because it's probably going to hit seven by Saturday. Yep. Illinois at Iowa. Illinois rolling right now. But, man, they got some just... 
awful injuries. They, they got some dudes. They beat up. It's been a long season. They've had some really big wins, and uh, I don't it's know. If they're going to keep going. It's fifteen for Iowa. I like Iowa in this spot. Yeah, I think, I, so. I think they get this win. They drag it down in the mud. They make it dirty. They they turn them over. All that. Just you know, the normal Iowa football game. And last but not least, of course, late night on the island, San Diego State at Hawaii. Hawaii is a three-point favorite. San Diego State's defense is unbelievable. And they play this type of an offense regularly in that conference. Hawaii is awful, awful as a home favorite of any size. 114-1 and one as a home favorite. They covered the last game. Before that, they were 0-14-1 against the spread as a favorite. The, last, the only time that they covered and all that was against Central Arkansas. And they covered the line by two. Wow. Was, yeah. not so good. not good. So I would, I'm a roll San Diego State here. Yeah. I like Rocky Long in that bunch. They've only lost two games all year. San Diego State is a really good football team. Completely agree with that. They will be able to run the football here. Oh, no doubt. And their defensive line will be able to get home, and they'll probably turn Cole McDonald over a few times. Yeah. So just a guess. But that one should be at least He's going to sling it. He's going to give you a chance to take it away. Oh, yeah. He's oh, yeah. absolutely going to do it. And, and he's also going to score some points. Oh, yeah. It may not be a ton against this defense, but I'm telling you, this is this will be a fun game to watch because it's two completely contrasting styles. We love seeing games like that. Yeah, we really do. Absolutely. All right, that's going to wrap it up, of course, for the Week 13 College Football Previews. Go to Winning Cures Everything. Check us out over there. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave us some comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, etc. If you're listening on Apple Podcast. Hit that subscribe button. We do appreciate you guys for jumping in here with us. Go to tunicatravel.com. We'll see y'all again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at GaryWCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.